I do one video without a hoodie on and I get all types of shit. Anyway, today's video is going to be about how to raise your team power and kind of your account level at the same time. I recently just hit the 300k mark and don't forget, I'm completely 100% free to play. I'm going to go over some things on how I did it so that you can do it as well. If you like this video and like all my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post the video. Let's go, baby. day area exploration you gotta love it right once you're done with the main story or even while you're doing the main story you do these area explorations to get extra rewards you can do them on all three summoners what you may not know is that you can do multiple area exploration quests at the same time as you can see i have this quest going this quest going this quest going all these quests that are available for me are going also the main thing you may not know is over at the top left there is a magnifying glass if if you click on this magnifying glass you can see all your area exploration quests thanks clouds all right this isn't in like some kind of order i'm gonna go over all the things that i know to help you increase your power level leveling up every single monster you have as you can see in my box every single monster that i have is at their level max cap depending on what star level they are obviously but if you go even the one star monsters i leveled up now leveling up monsters monsters yeah it doesn't raise your team power level but what it does do is raise your account level and once you get a new account level you get a new account skill and once you get a new account skill when you put one on your power level goes up just by leveling up every single monster i have i've gotten probably at least five to seven account levels i didn't really like count them i'm just trying to remember off the top of my head it could be more what's important to know as well is is whatever the monster's natural star level is when you level up that monster you get more experience for a higher natural star level for example all right let's say that i want to level up the best dark monster in the game ghost he's a natural one star but one stars you can level to level 20 same with two stars i've already tested all this just, just hear me out evolution does nothing to your account level but once you level a monster 10 levels as i am here if you look at the account level it went up a 100 points i've tested this on two star monsters on three star monsters four star monsters and five star monsters and even increments of five like 60 to 65 if you're trying to get the most points for your account level i'll tell you this every 10 levels for natural one star and two star monster gives you 100 points towards your account level for natural three star units every 10 levels gives you 200 points natural four star 500 points and natural five star every 10 levels is a thousand points towards your account level so go ahead and level up all of your monsters if you need to run path of training for a full day then so be it you're gonna raise your power level and your summoners and monsters get stronger at the same time another tip is summoning as much as possible this means all your unknown scrolls all the time this means all your mysticals if you're saving i hope it's either for a new monster you know is coming out in like a week or two or you're a content creator doing some content but just know you're limiting progression and power level because once you summon you fill up your monster book and your power level goes up here and this is because for example every time you get dupes of a monster you get more stats depending on how far the level of monster is obviously the higher quality star level the better stats right but just something to know that's why if you don't know what to farm for like repeat quests or something like that when in doubt always do calming the disturbance for one you get path of growth tickets where you can use where you like breath of life which you need a million and unknown scrolls right now repeat requests are the only thing i refresh to the max every single day for one you get a quest that gives you 300 crystals back but two this is because the amount of crystals we get every day just balances what we have to spend to completely refresh repeat requests if you do anything else over that you're having a negative crystal day just so you're aware next is outfits and you don't even need to wear the outfit you just need to obtain it i literally wear the only outfit that Orbia should. Duh. 
But if you're able to craft, craft as many as you can. And if you're just scrolling through here, looking at all the different types of sets and stuff like that, that's cool. I like this one a lot as well, but a lot of people use it. But if you're scrolling down, you can actually see which ones you have available to build right now. It has a little yarn icon at the bottom left. But as you can see, as long as you own the outfit, you get stats, which increase your power level. The powers of ascension on the left-hand side of the screen. These stats are not just for TO. Way. these stats are everywhere so if you increase all these stats as much as possible your power level goes up make sure to get as far as you can in toa make sure you get as far as you can in celestial and also in every single element which i need to push these more this will give you tokens towards power of ascension also do not forget that each floor has three challenges these give you the green token of test the token of guards and rahil medals now on to your monsters the main thing i about team power level you should always focus on a main three whether that's early game like konamiya shannon Asalia, or whether that's like windy naomi and Helia. but while you're building other monsters for specific dungeons your field team should always be your best your main overall team you can kind of take anywhere like for me it was tion shannon and Rakuni for the longest time and they were my top three power levels until i was able to max out a desert queen and an ifrit from the events max skill i mean as you can see everything adds up to your power which you get more team power the higher quality star level your monster you're using how much you awaken that monster runes account effect which is the account level power of ascensions toa the monster book closets and enhancing the monster skills i've already talked about a lot of these things but as you can see the three main things is the actual monster you use maxing out the level level 70 the rune quality and is that monster max skill with runes the higher quality of rune the more power you get i'm talking between blue purple and orange when you start getting good five star runes you always want to max out the slot two four and six slots first and if you really want to raise that power level you can max out the slot one three and five definitely make sure they're really good though also every single rune has an effect stone and an enchant all these little things on each little rune add up i always say maxing skills is way more beneficial than awakening this even proves it just towards power level but also as you see it just makes your monster stronger maxing a skill increases the attack or the length of buffs and even the strength of buffs but it's much stronger in the power level ratings too this goes for your summoner as well make sure all your gear has some gems in it or effect stones whatever you can put in there even your accessories obviously everything costs gold and with gold i have 1000 gold i ain't doing much but equip your weapons and gear with these things and your power level goes up i mean for summoners this goes for skills and transcendence as well obviously and that's why i talk about skill books only focus on one summoner with the extra skill books that you get from dungeons and crafting but put them all into one summoner so that you can increase the skill skills and get more power level that way and last but not least i talk about this in raids i talk about it in a lot of different other content i put out but to get your power level over that power level cap make sure to look at element advantage now this isn't permanent power level but this might help you get over the power level cap so you don't have a penalty or you get a bonus this will help you make team comps as well but as you can see i don't have a penalty but i also don't have a bonus it's just slightly hard Giggity. However, if you change your summoner's element to the element advantage, look at that. Now I have a bonus. I always try to base my team comps by looking at the dungeon, seeing what element it is, using the element of the summoner that I know is stronger against, and then looking at what that summoner brings, and then making a team comp for that. I mean, this also goes for the monsters as well, right? I don't have the bonus here. I take out Helia and put in a wind unit, and bam, I get that element advantage bonus. Bonus. Element advantage gives you about a 16% power level bonus on that monster or summoner. That's it for today's video. I hope this helps help you increase your power level. Let me know if you haven't done some of these things and you do and how much power level you get increased. If you like my video, like all my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.